The Vision High School Sports Beat, brought to you by the 11 locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships, offering Buick GMC, Dodge Chrysler, Jeep Ram, Hyundai, Kia, and Nissan, and the resale division. With locations in Webster, Henrietta, Penfield, Fairport, Canandaigua, Ontario, and Palmyra, and online at visionauto.com. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. This is the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. We are at Vision Hyundai in Webster on Ridge Road for the start of the Reason for the Season campaign. Each week at this time we take a comprehensive look at sports in Section 5 in Monroe County and begin with our honor roll of high school teams. At number three this week, Victor Girls Volleyball. The Blue Devils took an undefeated record into pool play at the state tournament. Victor was eliminated in the first round of play. Number two this week, Penfield Boys Volleyball won the Division I state championship in back-to-back -back years. The Patriots were a point from elimination in the fifth and decisive set in the final against Shenandoah, but came back from that to win. And at number one, Pittsburgh Girls Swimming, the top team at states for the fourth straight year, led the Section 5 team to the state title. Penfield was second overall. So, let's take a look at the Panthers. And one of the stories from earlier this fall before Pittsburgh wrapped up yet another championship season. This year, you step onto the deck. You stay on the deck. Now he has egress to get up and down the side of the pool. The right to come to me and say, Coach, your, your, your people are in the way. You have got to get them out of the way. I'm going to start this, start this qualifying people. It's this is a challenging season for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Relatively speaking, gone are Katie Smith and Lindsey Stone, who graduated each of the last two years. Championship swimmers, who over the past six seasons formed the foundation. This year, the team is breaking in seven new varsity swimmers. It is, it's a lot different, but it's not necessarily bad. I mean, you have a lot of people coming up and they're learning what it takes and what it means to be on this team and what they have to do and they're they're coming along really really well and they're all working super hard so it's good it's really great when you lose kids that have been in the program that long that has to be replaced doesn't it right it does and uh, some kids will will sort of gravitate to that position and sort of fill the void and uh, uh, other kids will have to be coast Marty Keating is in his 45th year as the head coach of the girls' swim team. He suffered a stroke in 2000. It cost Keating only 23 days at Rochester General before he was back poolside with his team. That kind of dedication and longevity give him unprecedented clout within the program. They joined me. Nobody put a gun to their head and made them come in here. They joined me. I'm not changing. This is the program. This will be the program as long as I'm here. There is no end in sight. There are few problems, and the kids love him. He's really fun. Um, you never know what practice is going to be, and it's always something different, and it's a surprise and exciting every day. You know, I, I wouldn't trade him for any coach in the world. He's great. He makes us laugh. He has amazing stories about his life and about other swimmers. He's hilarious. It's hard. There's definitely a, hard, a lot of hard work that goes into that. And um, it's definitely taught me a lot, not just about swimming, but in school, in life, about discipline, and about treating other people. So I, I really appreciate it at this point. I mean, maybe if you'd asked me like four years ago how I felt, I would've been like, oh man, this is so hard, but now I'm so thankful for it. Last year, a focus for the Panthers was the freestyle relay, and they set a state record. This year, it's the medley relay. Four different swimmers, four different strokes, same goal. How, how cool is it to be like the, like to have that event be like the focus of the season? 
It's awesome. It definitely puts a lot of pressure, I guess, but it helps me go faster in practice. Last year, I mean, we had a lot of freestyle sprinters, so the freestyle ones were a lot of focus. And this year, you have all of the best people in every stroke swimming together, and it's really cool to have that as a goal and to work towards it. Yeah, what's it take? I mean, obviously, you got the right people in place. What's it take to push that number down a little more? I mean, you just got to keep working and trust the process that it's going to turn out the way you need it to and the way you want it to, and I think that it might. So far, none of the seven newcomers has really distinguished themselves, but they will. It's almost a birthright here. Yeah, he watches you during club practice, which is off swim season on school, and he sees where you're at and how fast you're going in practice and what you're willing to achieve, and then he asks you and he asks you a couple questions, and he just looks for that. Is that a good thing, or, do, or can it be a little intimidating sometimes? Um, it can be a little intimidating, but it's really good. We spend probably um, anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes every day just talking about it, letting them understand where I'm coming from, and where the program, where we want to go, and where we, how they can help and how they can uh, join the party. Megan Duell wound up with two individual state crowns, and the Panthers had two championship relay teams, although they fell short of establishing a new state record in the medley relay. Coming up, Paul Gotham joins us to look at the fall sports season with our Dunkin' Donuts High School Notebook, and we check back in with the best football team in the city when the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Dunkin' has lots of fall favorites to root for. Maple pecan, pumpkin, maple sugar bacon. But on game day, we root for one team. One team, baby. Win the fall, folks. Welcome back to the Vision High School Sports Beat here from Vision Hyundai and Webster as we celebrate the Reason for the Season campaign. It's time now for our Dunkin' Donuts High School Notebook and joining us as usual, Paul Gotham from PickinSplinters.com. Paul, what you got going on the site this week? High school boys basketball, it's that time of the season. Uh, we'll start rolling out the season capsules, the previews for all the teams, Monroe County, RCAC, Private Independent, starting getting running with the season. Uh, we also will continue with local college basketball coverage. Fisher, RIT, U of R, Nazareth, we got it all. Very good. Let's, uh, let's wrap up the fall sports season. I mean, you're heavily involved with boys soccer. I mean, what are the things, what, what are your takeaways from this season that really stick with you? Uh, the old saying, defense wins championships. McQuaid rolls through everybody in, in the states uh, to that championship was, uh, was an impressive run. Uh, and to get to the end of the season and Tommy Galena gives up two goals all year long and both of those are penalty kicks. Uh, says a lot about that team and that defensive core. 20 seniors, how will McQuaid respond? Yeah. You do have Nino Pilato. Uh, as the coach. So uh, certainly uh, you, you would have to think there, there's going to be a step back, right? But with Nino, uh, you, you would also have to think that they're going to recover from that. That makes well. it interesting. I mean, I, for one, I've never heard of a team, any kind of a team, that had 20 seniors on it, let alone a soccer team, which, you know, they can have relatively small rosters. And, and when you, so think about it, you're going to practice and, and they almost have 11 against 11 all seniors that they can put on the field and uh, it showed on, uh, the way they played this year. They were, they were an impressive squad to watch all year long. What is it about Nino? I mean, you know, I watched him over Greece Odyssey and stuff and I mean, it's a, and we did the McQuaid story and we talked to him and he's so soft spoken and everyone speaks well of him and stuff, but what is the magic touch? I mean, can you see it? Soft spoken, but yet very direct. Uh, you know, I've stumbled across a couple of their, their uh, halftime huddles and listened in. He's very direct in, in what he says. He doesn't, uh, doesn't mince words, as the saying goes. Uh, and, and he's able to express himself and tell the kids what they need to do on the field. And, He's got a lot of experience, you know, a former Rhinos player, so he's able to make in-game adjustments with that team. And when and he'll he'll be the first one to tell you, it, this all happens because I had a lot of good players, mm -hmm. and and he was able to move his players around and 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 make the moves that they needed during. Secondarily, the game. what do you take? 
my secondary take. You know, Pittsburgh Sutherland's run. Sean Hopkins there made some great adjustments during the course of the season, and they were barely 500 going into the sectionals, barely 500 going into the sectionals, and they advanced to the final four. And really, they had a chance in that state semifinal game to advance. Uh, they did it also with defense. Uh, they kind of they put all their best players in the back, and, and they made it during the course of the year. I, I expect, even though they're going to lose guys like Will Grotman and they're going to lose uh, John Mosrow, and I expect Sutherland to be back again next year. Yeah, another team, maybe some a team that you saw and says, boy, you know what? Next year they're going to be a handful. Don't forget about Hilton. Uh, it, Justin Aralata up front uh, is certainly going to be a big player next year. Mike Ellicott really knows how to get his guys going, uh, and I certainly expect Hilton will be right back where they were this year uh, at, the, at the end of next season. Paul Gotham, thank you very much. Pickandsplinters.com, our guest on the Dunkin' Donuts High School Notebook. Coming up, we salute our Wegmans Making the Great nominee with Kim, and later, a first for the Wilson Wildcats football team, when the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back, and thanks for watching the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson from Vision Hyundai in Webster, and the start of the reason for the season. It's time now for Making the Grade, brought to you by Wegmans. Wegmans is a proud supporter of Making the Grade, which highlights the accomplishments of Section 5 student-athletes on and off the playing field. We now take a look back at some of our Making the Grade honorees this fall season. Lene Tava Thomas of Rush Henrietta is an All-American who earned six gold medals at states and set a national record in her age bracket with a long jump mark of 21 feet and 11 inches. Also making the grade this season, Peyton Lill of Webster Schroeder. She's a four-year varsity starter and earned her third consecutive first-team all-county selection last spring. Lily Gleason from Churchville is a varsity cheerleading team captain and has the highest GPA among her teammates while taking multiple AP classes. And finally, Spencerport senior Josh Rabideau has received honors at the state and sectional tournaments for volleyball. He's been a first-team all-county County selection the last three seasons and served as his class treasurer while taking a schedule full of AP classes. Thank you to all of our Making the Grade honorees this fall season. If you have a student in mind for our Making the Grade segment, we want your nominations. Send them in to info at classywolf.com. Now here's Bill with the Section 5 calendar. Here's the Section 5 calendar for the week ahead. The winter sports season approaches full gear. We have girls basketball. The first game of the year is a good one. Features Grace Athena playing at Victor Tuesday at 7.15. On the boys' side, on Friday, defending class AA champion Fairport opens at Victor at 7.15. Ice hockey is Churchville Chile at Webster Thomas, the Webster Ice Arena Thursday at 7. On Friday, it's Penfield against Rush Henrietta at Scottsville at 5. The wrestling season begins on Friday and Saturday at Webster Schrader with the Matt Marino Tournament all day long. Go see a game. That's the Section 5 calendar for the week ahead. A football first for the city when the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back and thanks for joining us. This is the Vision High School Sports Beat from Vision Hyundai and Webster and the start of the Reason for the Season campaign. I'm Bill Pucko. Here now are on a roll of high school athletes. At number three this week, Hannah Butler of Brighton. Hannah finished second in the state diving competition. Chloe Sarkis of Pittsburgh and Elena Costco of Greece finished in the top 10. And number two, Tony Naccarello of Penfield. The swimmer of the meet at sectionals. Tony broke the section 5 100, but didn't even compete in the 50. Well, she did last weekend and won the state championship in that event. Teammate Serafina Viola was second. Each also swam on a state championship relay. And at number one, Megan Duell of Pittsburgh, who did Naccarella two better. Megan won two individual state swim titles. In the 100 butterfly and the 100 back, that one in the Section 5 record time, Duell also swam on two state championship relays. It had been 10 years since the city school won a Section 5 football championship, and Wilson had never won one. We caught up with the Wildcats in October as a 5-0 potential Cinderella. Six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Woo!
11 years ago in 2006, East High won titles back to back in 2004 and 5. The last few years though, Wilson has been the place to be if you're a city high school football player. When you grow up and you pick a team, it's normal for a kid to, you know, you're not going to pick usually a team that's losing. You want to pick a winner. So if I'm a kid that's coming up, and that's what we're trying to preach to these kids, they're building it for the future. We want kids in the city to want to pick Wilson. When they're leaving middle school or even when they're in elementary school and they're thinking about playing high school football, we want them to think about putting on that black helmet and, and playing for Wilson. Greg Mortier has coached football at Wilson for 17 years. The Wildcats have been a sectional finalist, but have never won the Class A crown. The past three seasons, they were eliminated in the first quarter final round in competitive contests. This year, Wilson ran off to a 6-0 start, which included a victory over three-time defending Class B champion, Batavia. Uh, yeah, for us to be 6-0 uh, and at this point in the season is pretty exciting. We, we've never been um, to this level of success in the regular season, so it's brand new for me, it's brand new for the kids, but it is exciting. Uh, when I say that, though, we do have a JV program that was undefeated last year, so those kids are, are coming up with, with, you know, success is kind of the norm, so that, that does make a difference as we move forward. How important is football in your life? Very important, very, very important. Without football, I don't know, or I don't know what I would be actually, so I feel, I'm actually grateful to be playing. Are you using it though as like a, a means to an end, like a, as to have a destination of accomplishing something as a result of your playing football? Yes sir, I want to go as far as I can go, as far as I can go, make it to the league, hopefully keep up with my academics, my grades, and just go to the best of my ability, keep playing. Jamal McCullough is Wilson's most impressive interior presence. James Cotton is a four-year starter and the quarterback. But Cotton suffered a concussion in the win over Batavia and won't play again. So the Wildcats will be shorthanded as they try to do what hasn't been done in a decade by a city team. It's tough. I mean, it's tough. We have, I, I think, I think the combination of schools has made it difficult. We've got kids that are going all over the place. I think it makes it hard. But uh, if, as I look around, I mean, our numbers have been good. I know. Um, I know when you, when you look at all the other programs, I mean, it's hard to sustain year in and year out with, with I, I think, the way the, the district is set up in terms of the combination schools has made it difficult, but you just got to keep fighting through it. And I think the coaches that we have really try and do a really good job, but it, it definitely is not easy. I mean, I think coaches, if they came in from, from the county to, to see what we got to do on a day-to-day -day basis, they, you know, they, it's a little bit different. Ricky Gamble has matured into a fine football player, quite possibly Wilson's best, and became a team leader. It wasn't always that way. Coach says that he's, uh, he's always hammering, you know, discipline in your everyday life as part of the program here. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that's taken hold with you? Yes, discipline. That makes us, yeah, that's, I think that's, that's the thing that's making us good. He getting down on us when we're doing things wrong. He don't just let us lie. What is the message when he, when he gets into that? What is his message? Just be mature. Stop playing around, like fighting. They play, people play, play fight a lot. Just be mature. Do you feel it's helped you? Yeah. I, since last year, last year, I was horrible. I had attitude, anger management. I used to talk back to the coaches. And I had a long talk with them. I overturned all of that. I'm, I'm good now. Does that make you kind of a little more proud of yourself yeah. as a result? Yeah, because then I could talk back on people and tell them, like, I used to be just like you. Just listen and just do what you got to do, do the right thing character building. It's the cornerstone of a successful program, and it's a little more important here. For us, it's just the constant reminders about how to act, what to do, what not to do, and when you're doing something wrong, you know, how to fix it. And and I think I, I think with that discipline and character issue, I, I, like I say, I think that they might get annoyed with it when it's happening, but when it's done, I mean, we have a pretty strong graduation rate for kids that finish our program. I mean, we're well into the 90 percent of kids that if they finish football with us and they stick with it, we can get kids through. Just because you have, you know, you think about your normal day, now you have seven or eight coaches that are that are mentors for these kids that are constantly talking to them and reminding them about things. And, you know, and it doesn't end when football ends because, you know, it's kind of the way we, we set up that family type atmosphere is, you know, we're going to look out for the kids. The Wildcats scored 153 points against three sectional opponents and upset top-seeded and undefeated Irondequoit 
40 to 19 to claim their first championship. We'd like to thank our sponsors, especially the 11 dealerships in the Vision Automotive Group. They make the sports beat possible. As do you. Thanks once again for watching. We'll see you next week with the Vision High School Sports Beat.